Uh, an hour and a half left. That's it. Right. And I know everyone in this room here, the diehards, or you're just waiting for the free booze afterwards. <laughs> I don't care. I this is the best booze. track. Yeah, I got the booze. This is the best track by yeah. far. Yeah. By far. Um, so um, I'd like to introduce August Johnson. Um, he, uh, he, unique individual. He, he absolutely loves um, for for entertainment. He, Memorizes NIST documentation. Um, in his spare time. He loves loves spider charts. Uh, long long walks on the beach, sunrise, sunset. So um, he's going to talk about a, a real world problem that we have, and that is crappy coders who don't know anything about security. Um, hey, I've been coding my whole life, so I can say that. Uh, so I have a real world uh, scenario too. I was a coder, but I didn't understand security back then. Then I became a manager and started teaching people how to code websites. And one morning I woke up in a sweat and I went, oh my God, I didn't teach them about security. <laughs> Got them in a room and I said, do you know what an SQL injection is? And they're like, never heard of it. I'm like, oh my God, we've got stuff in production. <laughs> so anyway, great topic and I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Hey everybody. Um, yeah, this is building secure software. I think the title I put in the top of this was like 15 words long. This is uh, it was too long, so I shortened it. Um, I'm August Johnson. Uh, I'm a security architect at NetSmart uh, right now, and kind of my my responsibility there um, is just the overall portfolio as a software company um, of their application security. Um, so I, I do everything I can to make the software that we're going to produce um, considerably more secure um, than it would be by default. Um, a little history about me, uh, actually I, if I put a moment to like when I'm like, this is when I'm going into security, it was uh, B-Sides Kansas City 2011, um, which was a blast. I actually like helped a volunteer edit, um, and uh, I was like, I don't know anything about security. And they're like, we need volunteers, come on, hang out, you can watch the talk. So, it was a wonderful moment, and I'm glad to be a B-side of now. So this talk, um, I'm really going to go pretty deep into uh, one or two particular frameworks. Uh, but really, I, I'm going to give you kind of my opinion um, of a few different frameworks that all have the general goal of helping an organization build secure software. Um, I did a fair amount of research into the five um, that I've got on the next page um, and kind of selected the, the OWASP SAM as the one that I was going to specifically use, but all of them have some merits and some, some really valuable pieces um, that can be used. Um, so, yeah. Uh, these are the five that I'm going to talk about a little bit today. Um, and I'm actually going to go into it kind of from the bottom up. Um, because I have like two slides on the PSIM and then the rest of the presentation is on the same. Um, but uh, these were five that I looked for. There are certainly more than this that try and accomplish the general goal of helping to uh, helping a software organization build more secure software. Um, but these are the ones that I'll highlight. Uh, Microsoft has the SDL and a bunch of documentation with that. Um, they were probably one of the first to really kick off this whole like security first um, design uh, development life cycle. Um, and their stuff's pretty good. Um, it really is. Uh, it works pretty well, um, especially if your model is even remotely like Microsoft's um, with like shipping a desktop app, or I mean, for Microsoft's from mid-2000s. Um, it's living. Uh, it's something that I haven't looked too deeply into in the recent past, um, but it very much has been updated um, for the, kind of the current state of things. Um, if you tie in tightly to Microsoft technologies and that type of thing, uh, that'd be one that I'd recommend strongly looking at. Um, but it's also a little bit lighter on operations and governance. Um, this one is really about building software um, that does not have security vulnerabilities. Um, it's less about like running an organization that does not produce vulnerable systems and setups. Um, it's just kind of a slightly different way to look at it. Um, NIST uh, 800 SP64 is a giant headache inducing wall of text. Um, that is actually pretty decent if you can get into it. Um, 
But as far as the general advice goes and the tools that they give you, it's really not that bad. Um, if you're in a highly regulated environment, um, this is something that you're, you're going to be able to find some great stuff from. Um, and it is, uh, it, it's pretty fully featured and uh, that's solid, um, but I would say regulation is what would drive this over one of the other tools um, in general. Uh, ISO 27034, um, if you're familiar with ISO stuff at all, uh, it's pretty ugly, um, but it's really not finished. Um, that's the one thing I would say is that this isn't nearly as complete as the other ones um, in just being able to offer clear advice on building secure software. Um, so not something I generally recommend um, at all. Uh, but it's, it's out there um, and it's probably making progress over time uh, and it'll be a big deal, ISO stuff is a big deal. Um, the last two, the BSIM and the SAM, um, are ones I'm gonna go a bit deeper into. Uh, the BSIM is something I would highly suggest that everyone in the room um, just download the copy of. It's a free report, um, there's a lot of great information in that report, it's like a 50 page PDF or something like that, and you can skim through and get to the good parts that you really want to. Um, BSIM stands for Building Security in Maturity Model, um, and actually that and the OWASP SAM, which I'll go into, uh, they started as the same project and kind of forked um, at some point, like late 2000s. Um, this is a survey, and it's survey results, um, but it surveys specifically about application security practices, just general security practices, actually. Uh, the purpose that they state on the website is to quantify the activities carried out by real software security initiatives. And they just record the facts. Um, it's an awesome, awesome tool. Um, and uh, they're on the ninth version. They do one pretty much every year. Um, and the organizations that participate in this survey are, um, many of you are probably running their software right now. Uh, NVIDIA, Adobe, Lenovo, Verizon, Splunk, Cisco, Alibaba. All these places, they participate in this, and their answers to these survey questions about application security are um, in the results. Uh, so, um, like these are just some of the really interesting facts that you can very quickly pull out of that. Um, they also have all of these questions organized by uh, like industry. So if you're in the healthcare industry, if you make healthcare, um, or if you're a hospital or something along those lines, um, you can see what this number is for hospitals, um, for healthcare industry to be specific. Um, that's just really, really helpful data to have when you're like, hey, I think we need a security awareness program. Crap, two thirds of all companies have an awareness program and a whole bunch of like 90% of banking um, organizations have an awareness program. We do, we should, we're lagging behind in this area. Um, bringing those hard facts to the table is that's that's what can really um, get changed. So you can have kind of your smug Palpatine look um, on your face when you bring clear evidence. Um, one of the things that the BSIM uh, really helped me to understand too is that everyone struggles. Um, this is something that. Uh, things like bug bounty programs, which were like, oh yeah, these are cool, these are awesome, we'll get there in six months. Uh, nobody has one. Um, it's something that is super important, um, but it helps you understand the, the difference in your peer groups um, as far as companies go. This just does a really good job at illustrating that. Uh, and these charts are uh, built in there. Yeah, spider charts. Um, they're freaking awesome. <laughs> Um, so like some of the really cool things you can take from this, um, what do we got? The insurance is green and uh, healthcare is orange. So like in this case, you can see that insurance is almost always better than healthcare except for a couple of points. And so like, oh, insurance is better at uh, training, um, but worse on just about everything else, worse on just about everything else than healthcare in general. Um, they, it, it's just a, it, it's neat to see the industries and their application security practices kind of boiled to um, these really valuable charts. Uh, just to clarify, going outwards on the chart is better, more mature 
um, and inwards is less mature. And this is the, the 12 uh, security practices um, that they evaluate, each of them having like a bunch of questions underneath. Um, okay, so the OWASP SAM, this is kind of the meat of this talk. Uh, it used to be called the Open SAM. Uh, SAM stands for Software Assurance Maturity Model. Um, and this is really just a, I mean, as far as what it is, it's a big old PDF or a set of documents that help you to uh, clarify, I mean, to understand what maturity in a bunch of different ways um, throughout a software, um, software development process is. Um, they have different versions. Uh, I really started running my, uh, the program that I'm kind of doing now, I built out on um, version 1.1, which was current at the time, and 1.5 got released as I was building that program. So I kind of did a quick switch to 1.5. There weren't any huge changes. Um, 2.0 has a big change. Um, so I would generally recommend running on 2.0 um, at this point, unless you have any not good reason to. Um, but it's, it's beta, it's late beta. It'll offer you good advice um, as far as the versions go. Uh, this is, and vSIM both originated in about 2009, roughly, um, and it has changed over time to be updated. Uh, so, um, the goals of the SAM, I mean, they kind of speak for themselves. It's just uh, putting measurable metrics around software security um, in many, many different ways. Um, providing clear, actionable paths um, to kind of build on each other. Um, and really, like, making a document that works for anything that produces software, any, any company, any organization that produces software. Um, it's really, it truly is really, really flexible. Um, totally paradigm agnostic. There's nothing in there that's really like, oh, this only works in agile environments. Um, it's, that's not at all what this, this kind of document is. Um, and really, like, if you're only interested in one little piece of it, um, it provides a ton of value by itself, um, just however you kind of slice and dice it. Um, it absolutely does. Um, so this is kind of the chart, uh, and it talks SAM before 2.0 just had these four business functions. Um, what they tried to do was they stole a little bit from construction and a little bit from verification, um, and then they kind of built those out with it, uh, to have this build and deploy section. Um, the problem they were generally running into, and um, I kind of ran into as well, is that the actual build part of it, when developers were actually typing the code, um, this part was not very well repre um, represented. Um, so they they kind of pushed everything to the side and added this whole build and deploy portion um, of the SAM to better represent kind of that piece of it. Um, governance is overarching. Uh, you, you kind of, I'm not going to go too deeply into this, but um, basically the terminology you need to know, business functions, there were four, there are five now. Um, and then each of the business functions has three security practices. And on each of the practices, you can measure yourself in your maturity. Um, so I can know that our organization is a maturity level zero for strategy and metrics. Um, but we're pretty kick ass on policy and compliance. Um, we're maturity level three, which is kind of the maximum. Um, that's a realistic scenario. Um, and you kind of just need to know that that helps you respond um, and, and put your chips in one basket. You, you don't need to like get signed code, um, which is uh, pretty deep into secure build um, before you like have a security policy, a software security policy. Those are things that you can kind of measure maturity levels of practices, um, apples to apples there. Um, So I'm going to do a deep dive on a few of these. Um, definitely not all of them. Uh, what I tried to do here, actually, um, I'm trying to do a deep dive of one of the security practices and get you a little bit of information about um, e what each of the maturity levels inside them, um, what that 
consists of, um, what kind of features the SAM has to, to offer um, at Education and Guidance Level 1. Um, so I'm going to go through, uh, I have one of these in each of the business functions um, that I just kind of arbitrarily picked, and I'm going to look at it in a slightly different way. Um, so my first one is Education and Guidance. Uh, each of the security practices um, has two streams. Um, so education and guidance is made up of training and awareness stuff that you're going to do and organization and culture stuff that you're also going to do. Um, and each of those has the three maturity levels, um, but they're kind of, uh, that's all just mixed together. Um, so really for like stream A, um, to know that you have the first maturity level in training and awareness, um, that's providing security awareness training for all personnel involved in software development. Now, that's pretty basic. Um, they should understand uh, security at a fairly broad level. Um, and if you can say, okay, all the developers, all the project managers, even um, anybody who's helping to build this software has done security awareness training, check. Maturity level one in training and awareness, we're feeling good. Um, to get a little deeper uh, in that same training and awareness, um, you can offer role-specific guidance, and then the kind of final level of maturity is um, a standardized set of in-house guidance around the organization's secure software development standards. Um, so that means that uh, your development staff, they understand um, here is the security processes that we follow. Um, and you can kind of make sure that they understand. Uh, when some level of uh, certification is something that they talk about a little bit in the documentation. Might be like an internal certification. I'm a certified secure software developer according to my company. Um, for stream B, it's a little bit different. Um, for organization and culture, uh, maturity level one is like dubbing someone on the team the security champion. Um, just that. Like, it doesn't get much deeper than that. It says, well, here's some responsibilities that a security champion might have. Um, but that's totally up to your organization. Um, it could be many, many different things um, that they really end up doing. Uh, but just dubbing someone, giving someone that title and that level of responsibility and making sure everybody's on the same page about what that means, that's maturity level one. Um, two and three, uh, developing a secure software center of excellence. Um, talking about thought leadership and um, Here's some tools internally that we may be able to use uh, in just having a team that works together towards <coughs> building secure software, um, kind of a multidisciplinary team. And then um, the, the final thing that it says, and I mean, I'm obviously distilling this down into like one sentence of what maturity level three is, but it's building a secure software community, including all organizational people involved in software security. Um, so that's kind of just the idea of security as a first class citizen in the software building process. Um, that everyone is on the same page, that security is ultra important. Um, there's different ways to measure that and um, it offers some advice on exactly what that means. Um, but uh, it doesn't tell you how to do that either. Um, it just says, here are activities you might be able to do to accomplish some of these goals. Uh, the next security practice I'm going to get into um, is threat assessment. Um, so threat assessment, really like this table right here, I literally copied and pasted this out of um, the SAM documentation. There's one of these for every single one of the 30 security practices. 30? Something like that. Yeah. Um, 15. Um, so there's kind of 30 of uh, these pieces, these slices. Um, and it just talks about what you accomplish if you are maturity one in threat assessment. Um, so we did our best effort to understand the high level threats against uh, projects. Um, that's maturity one. That's something that, yeah, um, not bad. That's certainly better than nothing. Um, some people have spent a little bit of time thinking about threats to this piece of software, this, like, whatever it is. Um, Standardization uh, of enterprise-wide analysis, knowing that your organization might be a target of um, X, Y, and Z. Uh, those are important things to make sure everybody's on the same page about. Um, and then maturity three is really proactive improvement. Um, 
these are some of the activities that you might use um, to accomplish these different things. Uh, and it, it helps you kind of understand that best effort threat modeling is really how you start in this, um, but then you can start to get into some standardization, understanding that a, uh, an insider needs to be modeled against uh, all of your applications. Um, an insider uh, can attack your, your main front page website, and maybe they have actual right access to that. Um, talk through what that means. Um, so. Secure build um, is an next security practice I'm gonna get into, um, and these just talk about, it's really the, the description of um, what you, you as an organization get when you're at maturity level one um, as defined by the SAM. Um, your build process is repeatable and consistent, that's it, that is maturity level one. Um, pretty much any team with CICD has this. Um, any team that builds their binary on their Jenkins server or their Team City server, whatever, they've got it. Um, build process being optimized and integrated into the workflow, uh, that's the type of thing that you define what optimized and integrated mean um, as an organization. You, you kind of make sure that, okay, the, this is our metrics for optimized, this is our metrics for integrated, um, here's where we are today, and then you can start, the SAM helps you build a process to get there. Um, maturity level three is really that the build process is something you rely on. Um, and this really just talks about defects too. Um, that's one of the things is a, a consistent process for building code and managing your code is, it's not directly security positive, but it's so indirectly security positive. Um, it, just consistency and understanding that process and being able to rely on it and being able to easily show traceability um, between here's code that entered into the stream, here's what the SHA of that code is, and here's the code we were running in production. Um, those are things that are really, really valuable for all kinds of other things downstream. Okay, uh, we've gone through this security practice, uh, education guidance, threat assessment, and then secure build is what we kind of just did. Um, there are tons of other um, security practices, um, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple more implementation review and environment hardening, um, but I'm kind of just doing different slices of each. Um, so just generally know that like that table that I showed for this, available for all of them, um, paragraphs about how to accomplish uh, strategy and metrics maturity level one uh, are, are part of this product, um, or part of this tool set. They really are there. Um, oh, and a little note about the difference between the SAM 2.0 um, and 1.5. Uh, they changed some of the names of these. Uh, the general subject matter is about the same. Um, I just generally steer people towards 2.0 at this point too, because you're gonna kind of slice and dice it um, all kinds of different ways anyways. Um, and 2.0 will start to build out their, uh, the different tools that are built for it um, over time too. These are long-term processes. Um, architecture assessment. Yeah, I'm not gonna go too deep into any of these. Um, but really, this shows you the two different activities um, that you kind of complete in there. It actually didn't have any, it is still in beta. Um, so that's why uh, Lisa News there taking a look at you. Um, <laughs> to do your architecture is wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, it, this is just the types of um, statements that talk about here's what you have um, when you have when you can call yourself maturity level one. Uh, two or three. And really environment management, which is a super important one of just running secure software. Um, you're at maturity one for a relatively low bar, which is best effort, patching, and hardening. Um, the difference between this and this can be minuscule or it can be absolutely like terrible. Years um, between these two. That's something that 
that's why this tool is really valuable. Um, you can start to build out where you want to be um, as defined by some of these maturity levels um, and try and kind of tee that into what you think your organization can do. Uh, things like we have these products available to integrate with your applications. Um, we, we have a uh, uh, we have advanced uh, uh, WAF features that you can have in front of your app. Um, that's the type of thing that communicating that to different developers and understanding how they might integrate with it um, and how it might impact the process. Um, that's something that you talk through um, in these to really uh, kind of increase your maturity. Um, and that's pretty much all of those um, that I'll go through. Uh, some of the other tools that I'll go through um, that are available today, these are specifically for um, 1.5, but it wouldn't take very much work um, to make these available for 2.0, and they will be fairly soon. Um, you can measure yourself. Uh, so this is basically like a survey. Um, what I did was I sat down with a few different members of my organization and said, um, Hey, how do we do, um, or it's a bunch of just canned questions. Um, do we do this every time? Do we do this sometimes? Um, and that helped to get us to, okay, we have 75% of maturity level one, but we have a bunch of practices already at maturity level three that we've almost done. So getting us from not technically completing maturity level one all the way up to three is a lower level of effort um, than, than you might think. Um, this was another product of that same Excel sheet. Uh, you could talk about phases. Um, like uh, you could do a three month phase in your organization, for example, and say, here's where we are now. We fully got education level one. We're feeling good about that. So let's wait till phase two to bump that up. Um, but phase one, we're gonna focus on strategy and metric, policy and compliance. You can kind of see building maturity by security practice with some of these tools that are there. Um, you can set the length of your phase however long you want. Um, if you're a small organization that can implement a lot of security controls quickly, you can have two month phases or something like that, maybe not even that long. But you build on the practices that are there. Um, hey, I'll just for a short. Yeah, yeah, um, I'll scoot in here pretty quick. Um, so general advice that I'd say for you guys, uh, set some metrics um, and honestly start with the BSIM. This is the piece that uh, I would highly suggest that just everybody in this room reads the BSIM report, looks in there, tries to compare that to your organization and where you are. Um, it's a very valuable report um, and it helps you put what you know about your organization in context with everything around you. Um, and then just aim for gradual realistic improvement. This is really where the SAM can help you um, understanding uh, the practices that you're doing now um, and building on top of them um, to get to a level that is acceptable. Um, I generally say about this uh, this product and, and the SAM, um, it's, it's really easy to make good looking long term reports and presentations um, based on the data in this. It's just it's a high quality tool um, and it makes great slides in a freaking PowerPoint presentation to executives. Um, that's really what it does. Um, so I would highly recommend it for that because that's a good way to get work done um, in the future. Um, the roadmap that I built uh, has been significantly adjusted um, from what my big plans were um, a year ago or so. Um, lots of different reasons for that, but the, the tool overall supported that pretty well. Um, I kind of use the tool as a, uh, as a reference um, more so than really a true like roadmap at this point. Um, we're not in this rut going down this plan that was built out 18 months ago. Um, it's a lot more like we're just uh, building a, um, when changes kind of come up and they're driven, uh, they, I use SAM to help me illustrate um, what's important about this. Um, and that's really it. Here's, uh, we have time for a few questions. Um, we, we actually filmed before Riot at 3.45. So. I'll be around in the hall.